Hey everybody, this is Brian Gardner, Principal Developer Advocate at WP Engine. Today, we're gonna to walk through something a little bit more unique than things we've covered here before on the Builder's uh, YouTube channel. I'm gonna show you how to create a ConvertKit email opt-in form using nothing but WordPress blocks. Let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are gonna use WordPress core blocks to build an email opt-in form that connects to ConvertKit. Now, for those of you who don't know, ConvertKit is uh, an email marketing provider, much like MailChimp. And in this case, we're just gonna show you how to connect the form that's available to us. And a disclaimer here, uh, the form block is currently experimental and available through the Gutenberg plugin. So I'm just gonna walk us through how we all set that up and make that available. And then ultimately how we tie it to a form in ConvertKit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into my WordPress dashboard and I'm gonna add the Gutenberg plugin. And so we'll just uh, scroll over here to Gutenberg. We want to install this plugin. And after we install it, we're gonna activate the plugin. And again, if you look in the sidebar here, there's the Gutenberg menu link and there's a, a sublink here called experiments. And so you do need to click on that. And on this screen, there's a checkbox here for form input and blocks. What this allows us to do is have access to the experimental block uh, for forms inside of this plugin. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just create a simple page. I'm just gonna call the page ConvertKit uh, for now. And then I am going to uh, do the slash command to pull up the form. Uh, showing you also a way to do that is here, the plus button uh, as well, type in form. And so we're gonna create a form. Let me close out of this. So out, we're out of list view. So we can see here, we have an optional form. This is the basic uh, bones of this. Uh, I will go back into list view because we do not need the comment field here in this form. So I'm just gonna uh, right click and do delete. Uh, in this case, we're gonna set up a form that just captures uh, first name and maybe we'll just type that in and email address, uh, we can also adjust this as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit publish just so we can see what this looks like. Uh, going here to the front end, this is a basic form. Now, right now, all it is is a contact form uh, where it would take this information and when you hit submit, uh, right now it's configured, we can see here um, looking at the experimental form, we want to go to the block. Uh, right now it's set here on the right-hand side, you can see to send to the email address. And down here you could send the email address. So it's currently set up to sort of serve as a contact form, but we're going to change that. We're going to go to custom and I'll go through uh, how we're going to set that up. Close out of here. And uh, you notice here on the advanced tab, uh, when you select custom, you have what is called a form action. And this is what we're gonna go get over on the ConvertKit side. Uh, so I'm gonna go into a different tab here to my ConvertKit account. Uh, I'm gonna click create new because we wanna create a form uh, that essentially we're gonna tie the WordPress form to because uh, in ConvertKit you need to have a form for your subscribers. And so I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna select inline and then I'll just use this Claire form. This is one of the templates, uh, it's very, straightforward and lightweight. You can see all it has is email address. So I'm actually gonna click the plus button. We're gonna create a new field here on the right-hand side. Uh, we wanna select first name and for organizational purposes, we'll just switch these around. So we're kind of emulating this. We're not gonna actually use this form, uh, but I'll show you the difference in the end of why using WordPress core blocks for this is a good idea. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. So we've saved this. Now, the next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit publish. And what that does is it kind of gives me access to the code in ConvertKit to either put a JavaScript. If you put this JavaScript code into like a custom HTML block, uh, what it does is it kind of pulls the form as you design it in ConvertKit and puts it on page. But we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually go to HTML because this is the HTML, like the raw HTML for the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this HTML code. Then I'm gonna go back into the WordPress page and I'm going to add a custom HTML block just so I could paste all of that code in here. 
Now, as I mentioned, this would give us sort of the uh, code on the front end. Actually, I'll just go ahead and update this and we'll refresh the page. And what we'll have is sort of one form on top of the other, uh, just so you can see how this looks visibly. So this here is the WordPress version of the form. And this is sort of as it comes in from ConvertKit. Uh, a lot of people may want to use it this way, uh, but what's really great about using the WordPress forms block is that uh, it picks up the styling for input boxes and fields, submit buttons that the theme defines through theme JSON. And so it's more of an integrated look and much more of a match. And so a lot of people just prefer to use it that way. Uh, so I'm going to go into this code here. You can see there's a whole bunch of HTML. Uh, so this form action is the, the URL that we're looking for. We literally want to copy the HTTP, this whole form action. I'm going to hit paste. Uh, and going back up into the experimental form block I mentioned, uh, when you select custom here, you have this field called form action. So I'm going to go ahead and hit paste there. And so what that does is it sort of on submit, it will take this information and then send it to the um, this convert kit thing, which starts the connection process into your ConvertKit account. Now, when I first set this up, I thought that's all I had to do, but there's a few more steps, uh, but all of which are simple. Now, in order to take the information here from the first name input and send it to ConvertKit in a way that ConvertKit receives it, uh, I will select this. You can see here under advanced, there's uh, this field called name. Now, that's what we're gonna go look for in this HTML code here. I'm gonna do a command. Uh, search, just kind of do this. Uh, and so this gets me into the form code here. Uh, so you can see here, the input for the first name has a name equals, and then this little bit of code inside of the quotation marks, that's what we're looking for. So I selected that, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to this input and I'm gonna scroll down for name and I'm gonna hit paste. And you can see it does that. Uh, similarly for email address, there's another one down here. I'll highlight this and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Uh, so you can see here, this is the input class for the email address and it has this name. I'm gonna go back into this input field in the WordPress form block. Similarly, go down to name and hit paste. Now I'm gonna do an update. And so what we've just done is we've added the form action URL and then the two name input fields for both first name and the email address input box. This way, when we hit submit, it goes to send it to the URL and it says, hey, what's inside of this box, add it to the uh, the first name field in ConvertKit. Like it has its own sort of receiving API that we need to send in and send it to. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna refresh the page. We still have them both here. Um, but I'm going to go back into this. I'm just going to rename this uh, WordPress because we're just going to use it to confirm that everything that we have set up is to be true. And I'm going to go here. Uh, so I've got the form here and I'm just going to do a Brianna, just my fun sample. I'm going to say Brianna at frostwp.com and I'm going to hit submit. What it should do is just sort of do like a uh, send kind of to the generic ConvertKit success page. Uh, but before we do that, one more thing I want to do in this form uh, to make sure that this goes through seamlessly. Uh, if you go to settings here and then you go to incentive, there's a checkbox here, which sort of serves as like a double, um, a double opt-in. I'm going to take this off just so what it'll do is send me directly through. Got that set up. And now we're going to go ahead and submit the form and it should go through. Yep, success. And to confirm that this works properly, I'm uh, gonna go ahead here, I'll go ahead and save this, but uh, we'll go here into the report section and you can see now I have a one subscriber. So what that does is it confirms that this person, Brianna in this case, is now here. And if you go back to like your, your main subscribers list, you can see Brianna has successfully been added to ConvertKit. Click on sort of the fake name you can see here. Uh, under forms, Brianna is now part of the WordPress form. And so what we've done is we've used the Gutenberg plugin, uh, enabled the experiment for the forms block, added the forms, created our ConvertKit form, tied everything together, uh, again, using the fields and the form action. And then we've tested out 
that process. So in the end, what you end up with is a form that blends seamlessly into your site, at least with Frost it will. Uh, I will go ahead in the show notes, I will add a link to Frost if you want to use it. I will also add a link to the Gutenberg plugin, also to ConvertKit, and you can try it out yourself and see how this works. Uh, I don't know exactly when the forms block will be landing in WordPress core, uh, maybe 6.5, if not 6.6. .6. In the meantime, Gutenberg is a very stable uh, plugin that you can activate uh, on your own site if you want to leverage this uh, technology. It's a great way to do it. And this way you can do this all without the need to do a third party plugin integration. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. Otherwise, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Thanks again.